Hi everyone and welcome to a new video. Hold on one second. I'm going to turn this down a little bit. Um, I am here to do my June reading wrap up. Um, today is the 3rd of July um, as I'm filming this. Um, but put this up on a pillow real quick. Let's see if I can make it a little taller battery. I can't find my camera battery. So, and then over here is where I will put all of the... Um, Turn this up a little bit. Um, I'll put all of the books because I am currently packing, as you would have seen in a previous video, I believe my June wrap up. Um, you can see some <laughs> packages in the background. So I started with the books that I have read, put those in boxes first because that makes more sense to me. Um, because then I can um, store those while I'm finding a place to move. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna just talk through the books that I read. This month I read 11 books total. Um, I finished a lot of books because I couldn't go anywhere for a couple weeks. Um, yeah, but so the first book I finished was Easy Prey by John Sanford. Um, this is, I wanna say like 27th or 11th. It's like somewhere in, it's over 10 of the um, like Prey series um, by John Sanford. I read the first one, I think it was called Rules of Prey. Um, and then the reason I got this book was because I went, um, the first book mentions a, it takes place in Minnesota, but it mentions a bookstore on University Avenue which I have always wanted to go there, but I've never been there. And I went there with my roommates one day and got a book. Um, and I wanted to get a John Sanford book there. And this was one of the, this was the, the closest one in the series to the first one, which you don't have to like read them in order. The same as like the um, Agatha Christie books with her detective, like you don't have to read them in order. So that's what I did. I'm gonna turn this down just a little bit. Okay. Um. Anyway, so I finished that one. It's adult crime fiction. Um, it's basically about, this one is about a model. She is go, is at a party and she mysteriously dies. Um, and Lucas Davenport is a detective and he has to figure out who did it, like who had motive, who killed her, um, what was the cause of death and that kind of stuff. And then new people are dying like that are related to the case as well. And so he's trying to figure out like who is the one that actually wanted her dead and who killed these people and that kind of stuff. Um, that's kind of cool that way. Uh, the three words I used to describe this book was old school, mystery and corruption. Um, it was published in 2000, 2000 and you can tell some of the things that he says and like, mm, that's very much 2000 thing you would have said. Um, but I finished this on June 3rd. Um, I started it on May 29th, so I didn't even read it. Like, it didn't even take me that long to read it. So it's pretty fun. But I gave it four stars. So that's pretty neat. Um, the next book I finished in the month of June was Lunar Love by Lauren Kong Jessen. And this was the January book of the month book that I picked. And I started it very late. I started it in March. And then I was reading other books that I was like bringing to school with me and like more excited about reading. So it took me quite a while to get through this. I didn't finish it until June 4th, um, but it's an adult contemporary. And essentially it's about Olivia and she is now becoming the official owner of her family's, um, I'm sorry if this camera's a little shaky, it's literally sitting on a pillow. Um, but she is the now the official owner of her family's um, matchmaking business and they use the Chinese Zodiac to match make people and she discovers this she goes to like a I'm trying to think of what you would call it like a like a lecture or like a convention for like people in the like matchmaking or dating app business um and she discovers this app called Zodia Cupid or Zodia Cupid. And it is a online dating app that is 
going to use um, that claims to use zodiac signs to match my people. And so she views them as competition. And so she has met, it coincidentally met the creator of this app, Bennett. And so now she deems him as competition and she is trying to get some inside scoops on his company and try to like bring them down from the ground up. Meanwhile, Bennett is like totally welcoming to the fact that there's two of them, like that whole kind of thing. Um, there's of course they develop feelings because that's how it goes. Um, it's a good note in prairie. The three words I used to describe this book is stubbornness, zodiac and immigrant um, because she's very stubborn and he's very stubborn and his, like they're stubborn in their own ways. Um, Zodiac, it talks a lot about the Chinese Zodiac and like compatibility and then immigrant because her family is immigrants, her grand, her grandparents came here as immigrants and so she's trying to like preserve that culture and his, and she's only half Chinese because her mom is Chinese but her dad is like Irish or something I think and he's also only half Chinese but he hasn't been as acquainted to the culture. And so there's a lot of like that, like he's trying to get through to his roots sort of situation. Um, like I said, I finished it on June 4th. I gave this four stars. I think it's really good. It's probably closer to four and a half stars for me, um, but I gave it four stars. Uh, the next book I finished was Dreams Lie Beneath by Rebecca Ross. This was the November, November Owl Crate from 2021. Um, I'm almost done with my Owl Crates, guys. Um, I finished this on June 5th. Um, it is a, a fantasy. It's about a girl named Clementine and her father. I can't remember the exact wording of like what they are, um, but basically they like live in, you live in a town and you like, collect people's dreams and then on the full moon or like their nightmares you write down their nightmares and then on the full moon you have to like fight the nightmares and her she's training to take over for her father and her father gets displaced from his town by um these two twins come but only one of them takes over the town and so clementine tries to figure out what they have, what these twins have against her family. So she disguises herself and becomes Phelan, which is the other twin, um, like partner. And is trying to, she's trying to deceive him, but also trying to like figure out what his family, like what they have against her family. Um, and she kind of like catches feelings and that kind of stuff. Um, and then she ends up with conflicting feelings because she's like mad at him, but also like not mad at him. Um, anyway, the three words I used to describe this book are secrets because she's keeping secrets. He's keeping secrets. Her dad is keeping secrets. His mom is keeping secrets. Everybody's keeping secrets. Um, mystery. There's like a mystery they have to solve of like, who is this person and what do they want? And trust. They talk a lot about trust, like. Does she trust her dad? Does she trust Phelan? Does Phelan trust her? Do they trust these other people that are like trying to get them to do things? So trust is a big one. Um, this came out, oh, the Lunar Love one came out in 2023 for a new book. Um, Dreams Lie Beneath came out in 2021. So it was new when it when I got it. So it's still pretty new, relatively new book. Um, the next book I finished in the month of June only took me four days to read. Um, and that is Soulmates by Susan Lee. This is a YA contemporary. Um, this book I actually got, I ordered it from a bookstore in California that was doing a like personalized books. And so I got it signed to me. Um, I'm pretty sure I showed it in the hall where I got it because it came with like a swag pack too. But because I don't have it with me, I can't show you now. Um, but anyway, it's about, um, it's about a girl named Hannah and she is Korean American and her boyfriend who is not Korean dumps her on like their 
first day of summer vacation right before their senior year. Um, and she had all these plans to spend time with him all summer. And he dumps her because she doesn't know enough about K-pop and K-dramas and like Korean culture. And so he feels like they don't have anything to talk about. And then she ends up, her childhood best friend, Jacob, comes back into town to stay with her family for, um, for the summer because he is a K-drama actor and he needs some, a break from his, um, he's taking a break from acting. Um, and they're hanging out this summer in LA, in California. And it starts, of course, as like fake dating sort of where he is going to help her win back her boyfriend by teaching her more about like Korean culture and hanging out with her to make her boyfriend jealous. And, um, but then has also kind of always had feelings for her and she's kind of also kind of had feelings for him. And so like, there's that conflicting feeling of like, he's going to leave me again. He's going to go back to Korea. Um, describing this book in three words, confusion, because she's confused. He's confused about their feelings. Her ex-boyfriend is confused. There's industry drama. So there's drama about like his, um, what is it? Uh, like his company that he works with and like what their expectations for him are versus like what his expectations for himself are. And then there's feelings. They do a lot with feelings like feelings like emo, um, like relationship feelings. There's feelings about like herself and her culture and her identity feelings. Um, there's like his feelings about do I quit the industry or do I stay to like support my family feelings like that, those kinds of things as well. Um, this came out in 2022. I got this right away when it came out at the end of 2022 and it, I finished it from June 3rd to June 7th. I'm sorry if you can remember me, it's laughing. Um, anyway, the next book I finished was Echo by Pam Munoz Ryan. Um, this is a middle grade book. I read it as a book club with some of my students and it took us a really long time to get through it. I don't think any of them finished it, but I finished it. Um, we started it in January and finished it in June. Uh, but it's a very large book. It came out in 2015. It's basically about kind of this um, magic harmonica. So there's like the story of these three sisters and they, um, get trapped by their adopted mother, who's like a witch, into this harmonica. And they said they have to be stuck there unless they can save the lives of three people. And so then it, there's three parts to the story and it follows three different children during World War II time. So one boy is in Germany one is in California and one is in New York, I think. Like they're in three different parts and um, their like lives while they own the harmonica. And then like, it kind of shows like how their lives intertwine when they become adults. It was really cool. I liked it. it I feel like it was a little long because we took so long to read it. Um, but I feel like if I had like read it to them, or we read it together, I feel like it, they would have enjoyed it a little bit more. I gave it four stars. Um, the three words I used to describe it was history, because it talks a lot about, they learned a lot about history, like the Holocaust and how it affected not just the, um, like not just the Germans and the people that lived in Germany, it affected like the Americans and it affected not just the Jewish, like it shows like that, how everybody was affected by this world war. And that's why it was called a world war. Um, talk, there's some magic having to do with like the harmonica and that kind of stuff. And then music, cause all three of them are connected by music and are really into music. Uh, and so it kind of like flows that way, which is really cool. It came out in 2015, I think I said that. And then the sixth book I read this month was a book I read for Read Aloud. And we didn't quite finish it at Read Aloud, but I finished it afterwards. And it's Starry River of the Sky. So technically number two-ish. It's written by the same author as um, When the Mountain Meets the Moon, but it's different characters. But 
they all three of them have to do with like she wrote three of them but they all are like retelling um jenny's proverbs which is kind of cool it's by grace lynn it's historical fiction retelling middle grade um so basically ready he ran away from home and he ends up in this town and he has to help this town find the moon that is missing um and they tell lots of stories so there's this like woman who comes and tells stories and then she says that he also has to tell stories um and so it's like they are retellings of um chinese proverbs that they're telling as stories so i gave it five stars i love these books of hers uh she has three and because in montessori you each child stays for three years like if they start in first grade they stay for three years so i thought i could read one a year and then start over because then the children that were like the children that were in first grade last year will have heard all three, but the children that were in first grade this year will have only had heard two. So like, kind of interesting. Um. Anyway, we started this on June 1st and I finished it on June 14th. Came out in 2012. The three words that I used to describe it are stories, because it tells a lot of stories. You learn a little bit about history of China um, and then it's connection. So it forms a connection between um, the different characters so they form a connection all right i have five more books to tell you about but let me stop this right here i have five more books to share with you so we'll go ahead and get started um the next one i read was falling for korea by piper jean this one i started on june 7th and finished on june 22nd this one um it took me a little bit longer to finish only because i read soulmates over the course of like a weekend um, and falling for Korea was because I was preparing for the end of the year and then I also fell. And so I was, uh, not always in the like best place to read it, but I did finish it. It is, um, a YA romance. It was published in 2022. Uh, so, but it's basically Sydney. She is not Korean, but her mom did a study abroad in Korea and met her best friend and like learned Korean. And so she would only speak Korean at home. So Sydney's fluent in Korean. Um, and she ends up one day, her mom is like, guess what? You're going to Korea and sends her to Korea to live with her godmother, which is her mom's best friend who is Korean. And she is rich and she goes to live with her. Um, And she can't get hold of her mom and she's like, I'm not gonna stay here, I can't figure it out. And she immediately, everyone loves her, like everyone wants to, like she gets enrolled in this um, private school. And um, the girls all, not all of them, but like the main mean girl, she hates her, right? Right away from the get-go. And the boys all love her. And it turns out that the main mean girl, Min, has always wanted to be the girlfriend of Chol, um, who is the son of Sydney's godmother. And Sydney doesn't know who Chol is at first, but they're living in the same house, but their house is so big. And he is nice to her and like befriends her. And then she realizes that Chol is her like how her host brother sort of, um, and they kind of develop feelings for each other. But they are also Sydney's also in danger, and you find out the real reason why her mom. There's a couple reasons why, but her mom sent her to live. Um, in Korea, but she didn't tell Sydney. She was sent to live in Korea. So really interesting. The also, there's a couple of different reasons why she sent her and you find them all out at different times. So, but it was pretty good. Um, I give it four stars. I feel like it was kind of self-published and you can tell, not that like it's poorly written or anything, but just like editing wise and like formatting wise, you can kind of tell that it was a little bit um, self-published, but it was still good. I really enjoyed it. Um, the next book I finished was a book that I read on my Kindle 
which I had to get a new um, cover for. Let me just pull up the picture here. Okay. It's called Murder at McDonald's, The Killers Next Door by Fonz Jessamine. Um, but it is not exactly what I thought it was. It's a true crime nonfiction story. So I thought this was more like a book, like a story. Like I knew it was a real event that happened. There was a murder at McDonald's in Canada in like 1992, I believe, like the year I was born. Um, and I was thinking that the, um, um, I was thinking that it was going to be more like the story of what happened, but it was really just like a newspaper article, uh, that was happening. So it's like very detailed. Um, essentially there was like a murder at the McDonald's and it was three teenage boys. One of them worked at the McDonald's and they originally went in to rob the place and ended up killing four people and severely injuring one, like one of them survived. I believe it was, that's what happened. And it tells the story of like this from the reporter's point of view, because he was there at the crime scene and he got to follow all of the trials and he talked to all of the like police that interview people and stuff. Um, so that was, uh, that's kind of how it was, but it was very detailed. I felt like it kind of took away from the story. Like I kept forgetting the details of the case because I learned so much about the characters and the after. So like I kept forgetting like who they would mention the like sort of victims. And I was like, who is that again? Like, or they like two of the boys had very similar names. I think all three of them started with a D. But I was like, I'm so confused about who is who. Um, so I sometimes have to go back and like find them and figure it out. And when I finished it, I had left it at my parents' house for a while, my Kindle. And so I had to like take in a break from reading it. I started it on May 10th and finished it on June 23rd. So I had taken like, I took a couple weeks off because I was like waiting for the chance to connect with my parents to get my my Kindle back and then the hospital was waiting and I can go back and it was dead by then. So yeah. Anyway, um, the three words I wrote was scary because it was pretty scary. Like the details were really scary. And the fact that it happened was really scary. And like the randomness of it was really scary. Um, murder, because it talks a lot about murder and then secrets. There were secrets, like the boys had secrets and um, there's things that like they're not even really sure if like the details they have are the correct details because it's all from like speculation and because it was the early nineties, they didn't have like all of the technology that we have. Like they did not have CCTV cameras and they didn't have a bunch of other things. So that was kind of that. Um, this came out in 2008. I gave it three stars. Um, the ninth book that I read this month was These Violent Delights number one by Chloe Gong. Um, this one I borrowed from my roommate because they have a cheap version or they got a used version of it at the thrift store. Um, and I wanted to read Koi Gong's books. Um, but basically this is um, sort of a Romeo and Juliet retelling, but it's about Roma and Juliet. Um, they are the bosses of opposing gangs, but they have to work together to find and stop the spread of madness. So Juliet is the heir to um, the Chinese gang in Shanghai, because it takes place in Shanghai. And Roma is the heir to the, um, the Russian gang that also takes place, that lives in Shanghai, but is Russian. Uh, and they, your families hate each other. There's a blood feud, yada, yada, yada. Of course, it's like Romeo and Juliet. So they kind of like each other. Um, and they form an alliance without telling their families to figure out there's a madness that is infecting people's brains and causing them to like rip their own throats out. And so they have to stop it. This was in 1920s Shanghai. So there's a lot of like 1920s kind of situations that happen too. Um, 
so I liked it. I gave it five stars. The three words I used to describe it were gangs, because it's gangs, disease, and feuding. Um, it came out in 2020. I started it in April and finished it in June, I, June 27th. I also left this at my parents' house for those two weeks, so it was a little, a little while that I left it there. Um, the 10th book that I finished this month was City of Nightmares, number one, by Rebecca Schaefer. Um, this was my first ever fairy loot book, and I believe I got it in February. I, excuse me, I think I got it in February. Um, it's a YA fantasy. It's basically about Ness, who lives in a town of nightmare, like the people who are nightmares, people turn into nightmares. Um, if you don't take these pills or drink this like purified water when you dream and you can turn into your worst nightmare. And she is terrified of nightmares ever since when she was little and her older sister turned into a giant spider, which was her nightmare and killed her dad um, before being killed herself. So Ness is terrified of nightmares. Um, and she lives in this like cult that she insists is not a cult. Um, and they protect her sort of um because she has her like own room where she doesn't have to like worry about other people and like be afraid of nightmares um and she goes to comfort a woman at a funeral whose um husband died because he was a nightmare and the woman turns into a nightmare and Ness screws up and doesn't do it she doesn't do what she's supposed to like with her training and asks for a second chance and ends up going on the boat to do male duty on this like mail ship and on this mail ship she meets Sai who is a vampire um, nightmare and when she goes to confront him the boat gets blown up and they end up surviving the only two survivors of the boat um anyway um and so she ends up kind of having to face her fears of nightmares and also figures out that like some of the things she thought were safe aren't actually safe. Um, and what does it mean to be safe? Who can you trust? Things like that. Um, so she used to come to terms with a lot of that. There is a part two, I believe it comes out soon, like August, I wanna say. This book came out in 2023 so it's like comes up pretty quick but i'll have to look but i do want to read the second one to kind of figure out what happens next read it from june 5th to june 29th the three words to describe this magic there's a lot of magic because of the nightmares um fear she has to face a lot of her fears and trust the nightmares it talks a lot about fears anyway and then trust just to figure out like who she can trust what does it mean to trust someone what makes a safe space or a safe person sort of situation um, five stars for that one. And then the last book I finished was Skin of the Sea by Natasha Bowling. This was the December book of the month for Owl Crate 2021. Um, so I'm almost all cut up on my Owl Crates. I have one more because I only got one last year. <laughs> so that's good for me, sort of, um, because I haven't been caught up since 2017. So anyway, uh, yeah. So it's by Natasha Bowen. It's a YA fantasy mythology book. Um, basically, Simi, she's a mommy Wata, which is um, it's a, an African folk tale. Uh, I believe it's a folk tale. About, uh, basically, they're like mermaids with their mommy Wata. Um, and her job as a mommy Wata is she was, she was turned into a mommy Wata by the like goddess of the ocean. And her job as a mommy Wata is to release the souls of the dying because there's a lot of slave ships are leaving. And so they, people are being thrown from the slave ships or jumping off the slave ships to get away. Um, so a lot of people are dying in the ocean. And so she's supposed to take their souls and offer them up to the creator God um, to kind of bless their souls. Well, she finds a boy in the water who is still alive. He is not quite dead. Um, 
And so her job is to, she saves him and he figures out who she is. And then she gets sent on a mission to find these two rings that she can use to summon the creator God and ask for forgiveness because she broke their like oath. She didn't do what they were like. That's their only role is to release the spirits and she saved someone which was not part of their role. So she's supposed to go ask for forgiveness. Um, and she is warned that if, um, if she falls in love with this human, she'll turn into sea foam and they won't be able to be together. So she's like dealing with that struggle the whole time. Um, there is a part two to this, this is the second book. Um, I do want to buy it. Um, so I'll have to go see if I can go to that bookstore, to a bookstore this summer. Um, I give it five stars. Uh, I read it from June 5th to June 29th also. Um, it came out in 2021. The This book in three words, mythology, because it's African mythology, so there's a lot of like gods and goddesses, African gods and goddesses, um, secrets. She has secrets. Kola has secrets. Kola's the boy she saved. Um, other people that they interact with have secrets and danger because she's constantly in danger. So that's fun. Um, it's really action packed, but like, it's really cool. And then uh, my monthly wrap up now, I'm going to share with you. Um, I read 11 books this month. Uh, top read of the month was Soulmates. I really liked Soulmates a lot. My new favorite character is Simi from Skin, um, Skin of the Sea. Um, new to me authors, they were all new to me except for John Sanford and Grace Lim or Lynn. Lynn or Lynn? Lynn, Grace Lynn. Because I've read Grace Lynn's books before. I have read John Sanford before, but all the other authors I've never read before. So that was fun. Um, and then Pages Read, I read 4,763 pages. So that's a lot of pages. Um, a notable quote that I have is. This is part of a quote, and then I'll read the whole quote, but it's from Lunar Love on page 307. It says, maybe there's beauty in opening yourself up to the love you don't expect. And so the whole quote is, maybe there's beauty in opening yourself up to the love you don't expect and the traits that will keep you guessing. Because compatible or incompatible, we, we're we all just trying to love and be loved, however that might look. So that's really fun. Um, the order of the books that I finished this month um, my number one book was Soulmates. Number two was City of Nightmares. Three was Skin of the Sea. Four was These Violent Delights. Five was Star River of the Sky. Um, six was Falling for Korea. Seven was Lunar Love. Eight was Dreams Lie Beneath. Nine was Easy Prey. Ten was Echo. And eleven was Murder at McDonald's. Um, yeah. So those are the ones I'm reading. Currently right now, I'm reading um, another book on my Kindle. I'm reading six books right now. Um, and I finished all of the books I was reading except for um, Clockwork Angel because I left that one here because uh, my mom came and got some books for me and my roommate sent me with some books. So we, I finished all the other books I was reading except for... Um, that one uh, while I was home with my leg up. Um, yeah, but anyway, that is um, all the books I read in the month of June. Make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Comment down below what your favorite book was that you read in the month of June. Um, if you've read any of these books and you have different reviews or if you have other things you want to say, um, comment that down below as well. And make sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching.